Welcome to Auto Ingenuity's demonstration of the ScanTool software. I'm going to be demonstrating the enhanced Ford expansion. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to move through systems, sensors, retrieving trouble codes, and connections. First, let's demonstrate the connection speed. I will first select the connect green button on the left. It found the hardware. In this case, the vehicle is a Lincoln 2010 Navigator. And I've already loaded the VIN. I'm going to show you loading the VIN again. And it will decode the make, model, and year for us. In this case, engine type, product line, and transmission transfer case are unnecessary. So they are disabled. And in this case, you can also see that the Lincoln 2010 Navigator was decoded for me for the make, model, and year. Now, at the bottom of the list, you'll see a controller or system list for this particular make, model, and year. As you can see, there's quite a few in that list. Again, it depends on the vehicle. It always defaults to enhanced powertrain, as that's the most important. And for our demonstration purposes, let's begin there. I will click OK. And now the connection time, as you can see, it's going to load mode 1 from generic OBD2. It'll load mode 6, as well as reading the entire enhanced data coverage. And you can see that's completed. And now I'm presented with the option of retrieving trouble codes from all controllers, the currently selected controller, or none at all. Let's begin by selecting from all. Now, a progress bar will display, and as it walks through each of them, doing a network test to see if the controller is present, and then it will retrieve trouble codes if it is. And in the Diagnostics Trouble Code tab here, you'll see an example. We have an intake air temperature and a P1000 for enhanced powertrain. The other controllers all have reported no trouble codes present. Now, I also have the ability to clear from all controllers, the current controller, or none at all. Let's select none at all. Now I want to show you the speed at which Auto Ingenuity can add and remove sensors. As you can see, the sensor list is quite extensive. Traditionally with handhelds and even some of the PC scan tools, adding a sensor is still a laborious task. With Auto Ingenuity, with a single click, I can add the entire parameter or sensor list for this controller. And as you can see, it starts to update. Now, another nice feature of the Auto Ingenuity scan tool is the ability to preserve your sensor set. Say I wanted to view these in a meter. Without having to reselect these, I can see my sensor set in a different format. Or perhaps I want to graph them. Going back to the grid, I'll complete the demonstration of how we can manipulate the data on the screen. I'm going to remove all sensors. I'm going to press E. It will take me down to the E's in the sensor list using the E on the keyboard. Now I want to see engine revolutions per minute. Oh, you know, maybe barometric pressure. So let's scroll up to the B's, or if I want to press B on the keyboard. Now I can demonstrate another unique feature of our scan tool is how quickly you can configure the sensors, not just add them. PSI can turn into KPA with a single click. No more having to come back out to the user configuration window and resetting that. Engine RPM, 8,000 RPM is too high for our demonstration. No problem. Let's change it to 1,000 by clicking OK. The minimum and maximum range are scaled accordingly. Now, from a distance, I can see this graph much easier than within a range of 8,000 RPMs. Now, as you can see, we have the minimum and maximum range. It's pre-default, pre preset defaults from the vehicle manufacturer or the SAE, whether it's generic OBD2 or enhanced data stream. But in this case, 
you can see that we're at 64% because we're 640 RPMs. Now, from a distance, that color is easier to identify than any of these numerical values, even in the meters. I prefer to see the color coding, especially when you're dealing with uh, states like solenoids or buttons. If I was to press um, a button on my instrument cluster, it would go from 0 to 100%, and I could see it go from green to red. And without ever having to know what the value was, I know that I just actuated or the button pressed. Now what I want to show you is bidirection controls. Another key feature of any scan tool is not only how quickly you can get to the data that you want to see, but also how you can manipulate the vehicle's outputs. So in this case, we represent data in two formats. We have component level actuations, and that's in our lower left in the actuation tab. Now this is a floating and dockable tab. Why is it floating or dockable? Quite simply because if I want to view it in a meter or a graph, I shouldn't have to change my display or sensor settings. I should be able to have these available to me at any point. In fact, even in the trouble code screen or test on board systems, say if you were selecting a power balance and you wanted to disable an injector for the 6.4s and 6.7, that option is available. Our tool already affords that. Now, the difference between the actuation tab and the test on board system tab is the actuations are, again, component level, and the test on board systems are system level and requiring inputs. Now let's dock this for a second and put that down out of the way and if I select this pin in the lower right it will unpin it from the screen and hide. Next time I need it I can mouse over it and it comes back. As soon as I mouse out of the window it disappears for convenience. System level bidirection controls are going to be your key on engine off, key programming, where you're going to have inputs and outputs. It's not simply going to be firing a solenoid. So in this case, I want to select initiate. I'll be prompted for if this is a V8. Yes, it is. It will begin plotting the, the engine RPM data as you normally expect in a power balance stop that. Now what I want to do is show you how quickly we can move through systems. In the upper right hand corner we showed you connect. Here's disconnect from the vehicle but in this case I want to change to a different controller. I'm going to select the purple change system button or if I wanted to press F7 on the keyboard. My vehicle selection screen is re-put in front of me and I have the option of going through and selecting any of these alternate systems. Let's do an ABS controller. It loaded the enhanced data stream. It presents me with the option of pulling trouble codes from all, current, or none. In this case, let's just do the ABS controller. And you can see how quickly you can move through the controllers this way. And the data is still represented the same. One click all your parameters. Bidirection controls, test on board systems, and obviously all this coverage changes depending on the make, the model, and the year. So let's try that again. System configuration, I'm sorry, change system, or F7. Again, it always defaults to powertrain. And say we wanted to do transmission. Select OK, it loads the coverage and asks you if you want to retrieve trouble codes. Bidirectional controls, system level tests, and live data PIDs. Now, to complete the connection to the vehicle, by pressing the red disconnect, I can end our vehicular session. And that concludes demonstrating Auto Ingenuity's Diagnostic Scan Tool, version 10.